Unit Six, Section F, Reading Text. Making a difference. A Tech compliments. Wilson Toe was beginning his final year at school when he decided to get a school Facebook page started. Nothing unusual about that, you might think, but Wilson's motivation for setting up the page wasn't generated by a wish to discover the latest school gossip. He believed that Facebook could help him take on a problem that was making life difficult for a few schoolmates: bullying. Without mentioning his plans to his friends, Wilson launched A Tech Compliments, a Facebook page which invited students to send in anonymous compliments about each other, their teachers, and their school. At first, Wilson wasn't expecting much of a response, and although he didn't want to limit anyone's right to freedom of speech, he monitored messages closely in case unpleasant comments or racism appeared. However, Wilson needn't have worried. A Tech Compliments was an instant success, and quickly had five hundred regular followers, all of them being positive. It seems that the students were just waiting for the opportunity to say nice things about each other and their school. Although everybody wanted to know who had thought up this great idea, Wilson kept his identity secret until the end of the school year. When the school intercom asked the creator of the Facebook page to reveal themselves, Wilson stepped forward to receive the applause and thanks of the whole school. He was also given one last job to do: train a new administrator so the page could continue after Wilson stepped down. Today, not only does the compliments page continue to be a success. But the idea has also spread to high schools across the country. Youth matters. Morgan Baskin was a very busy eighteen-year-old. She put in ten hours a week doing voluntary work, and she was in her final year at school preparing for exams. However, she felt she still had enough free time to squeeze in another activity: politics. But Morgan felt that unless she did more than join a political party and help out, her voice wouldn't be heard. So she decided to be a candidate. Morgan decided to stand for election to the post of mayor of the city of Toronto, the biggest city in Canada, and used money that she had earned from babysitting to register. Naturally, elections for such an important job receive a lot of media coverage. And Morgan soon found herself the centre of attention. Morgan realised that if she had been male and older, she probably wouldn't have interested journalists so much. But she used her newfound fame to get the media to talk about what had made her want to become mayor. Politicians didn't care about young people. Morgan explained that while many politicians claimed that young people were the leaders of tomorrow. Young people couldn't make politicians address any of the problems that they face today. Morgan's criticism of the political situation made an impact, as she received emails from young people who said that they were going to vote for the first time because of her. After an intense period of campaigning, election day finally arrived. When all the votes had been counted. It was announced that Morgan had finished in eighth position out of a list of over sixty candidates. It was a great performance for a teenager who many young Canadians hope will get ahead and continue to put issues that affect young people on the political agenda. Voice of the community. A teacher spotted Rene Silva's talent for writing when he was just eleven. And encouraged him to set up a community newspaper. Rene accepted the challenge, and took on publishing Voz de Comunidad, Voice of the Community, and he soon realised that the monthly newspaper could help his neighbourhood. However, Rene's neighbourhood isn't just any neighbourhood. Rene lives on the edge of Rio de Janeiro in a favela, a poor town that used to be controlled by armed drug gangs. 
Rene's newspaper quickly became a vehicle for protest about the poor conditions in the favela and gave a voice to local residents who were campaigning to make the community a safer and better place to live. But one Saturday morning, Voz de Comunidad was transformed from a small local newspaper into Brazil's most popular source of information. The government had decided to force the drug dealers out of the favela and had sent soldiers onto the streets. Journalists from the mainstream media waited outside the favela for news, but René and his team of teenage reporters were in the middle of the action. Using their mobile phones to film and take photos, the Voz da Comunidad Twitter account suddenly had thousands more followers than usual, and the quality of René's reporting soon attracted praise from the mainstream media. More importantly, it started a debate about how the government should help the inhabitants of Brazil's hundreds of favelas. René and the Voz da Comunidade had taken a big step towards bringing positive change to the community.